church where they might also be saved. You hear what I'm saying? So as a church, what's the corporate responsibility? We need to provide air cover for your handshake when you do it because there's nothing better than you personally inviting someone. So what are some of the kinds of things that we're doing to try to you know, complement that? Right now, um, coming out next week will be the largest mailer we've ever done in the history of the church. 60,000 piece mailer is getting ready to drop to invite people to come out here to, to uh, Journey Church. We've how many of you have seen the billboard over there on Blanding? Anybody seen the billboard coming out? We got the billboard. We printed up 5,000 personal invitations that you guys have already handed out every one of them. We're wiped out in Jesus' name. You guys are amazing as you just let little pieces of paper touch people with the love of Christ. And uh, we filmed this little commercial with this, this guy that has something to do with this upcoming series that we have in a couple of weeks where we're trying to be relevant and creative. And maybe you might watch it. My name's Eric Jaffe. I'm the pastor of Journey Church. I'd like to invite you out to the grand opening of our new facility at 6225 Lake Gray Boulevard, just one block north of 295 off Blanding. Hey everybody, this is Johnny Van Zandt of Leonard Skinner. Come celebrate the grand opening of Journey Church. No Leonard Skinner fans in the house today? No old Southern Rock fans? I'm Johnny Van Zant, and I'd like to invite you to the grand opening of Journey Church. You know, he, Johnny came here the other day. We had a wonderful time with him. He stayed about an hour with us, and when we kicked off our new building down on Blanding, we started off in what we thought was a really fun way. We used the name Journey, and, and we spoofed, and we did Journey the Band cover tunes as part of the launching of the series. And we pulled out different songs from their, their years as a band, and we picked out some of the things that you might want to follow and some other things that you really did not want to do. So we kind of weaved the messages in both directions. And if you don't know Johnny, Johnny and, and the band Leonard Skinner has been around for more than 30 years. They were just inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this past year. Um, you know, he is a believer in Jesus Christ. He came here and sat down and did an hour-long interview with us in conjunction with the series that we're going to kick off two weeks from now that's going to be Leonard Skinner cover tunes. It's going to be a lot of fun as we look at the good things that you want to do and the things that you don't want to do. And he was very candid about both. So we're going to get to share a lot of those clips during the course of the series. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So if you know some friends that are Skinnerd fans, be sure to invite them. It's one of the ways that we try to be relevant with what's going on today and something that people of the world might be interested in, but they don't know necessarily behind the scenes that, that there are believers behind that that would love to see them come to know Jesus. So what a great opportunity to invite your friends two weeks from now for the official grand opening of Journey Church. One more amen. That's going to be fun. I love it. That's awesome. My last point for today. I'm going to be a little bold in this. It might seem out of context, but I really believe the Holy Spirit wants me to share this with you today. Whether this is your home church, whether this is not your home church, there's something that I fundamentally believe in and want to touch your heart with as part of the core of the DNA of Journey Church, and it has to do with serving. And we put a great emphasis on serving here because we believe it is a way, not the way, to spiritual discipleship. When you combine it with other things like group attendance and loving God and loving others and the things that we've been talking about, it creates for a very holistic Christian experience where maturity can take base and maturity can grow in our life. I'm here to tell you and be blunt in telling you that if you are a believer in Jesus Christ and you are not serving, there is something wrong with your walk might sound scary. You might be, Eric, why? Why do you say that? If Christ's example that we read earlier is he says, I came not to be served, but to serve and give my life as a ransom for many. The statement that I'm making has nothing to do with your salvation. I realize that there are seasons in people's life where you might not serve for a season. It should be a short season. The primary thing that Jesus did to draw people into relationship with Christ is he served them and he met their needs. That's the primary way that he did. That was the primary avenue that he used to touch people tangibly with the kingdom of God coming to them. If they were sick, he brought them healing. 
If they were in need of food, he brought them food. He did whatever it took to touch them and meet their physical needs, their emotional needs, and their spiritual needs. So there's a great burden on my heart, not that we need a whole bunch of people to serve. You saw how everything came together today. I don't say this because we want people to serve. In fact, if you're visiting from another church and just here to support us, and you're not necessarily serving at your home church, the same challenge to you. You need to serve. You need to be plugged in. The first word that we said earlier was engage. It means to become involved, to be a part of what God is doing, serving inside and outside the walls of the church. That is the calling, the DNA, part of who we're supposed to be as believers. So I want to lay that challenge out to you today. One of the ways it happens is that when you do find your home church, when you find that place where you're called, then something happens typically inside of us where we want to be a part of, and it's what makes people stay up here till three in the morning trying to get the wiring right and to get the lighting right and to go you know, clean the place and do whatever it takes so that when people walk in who don't know Christ might come to experience him for the first time. So there's something that lines up with our heart. And my prayer is that today, if Journey Church is for you, man, come back, get fired up, engaged, be a part of what God is doing. If not, there's many great churches in this area where you can plug in and use your hearts, your skills, your abilities to further the work of Christ. And we need to do it. This is not a time for sitting back on the sidelines in Christianity. There's not a time for that right now. This is a time where we need to be fully engaged. The culture is deteriorating around us. We as Christians need to rise up, to stand, to make a difference, to use our lives, to touch people with his love. That's what's going to change America and turn it around for the good. You hear what I'm saying? That's what America was built on. That's why he brought you here. So if this isn't the church for you, man, go, go to Celebration. Go to Oak Leaf on Sunday nights at 5 p.m. Go to Abundant Life. Go check out a church until you can find the place where God's called you to plug in. And then engage. Go full throttle. Be involved. Don't let serving not be a part of your life. You want to know how you end selfishness? It's called selflessness. It's Christ's example. He will help you as you serve to create a selflessness in your heart. In the beginning, you might not want to, but I'm here to tell you there's people like Anna who we were hanging out with yesterday, and she would tell you stories about how there was challenges in her life. There was challenges in her relationship. There was challenges with her kids, and these were the kinds of conversations we initially had. Guess what? She plugged in, and she started serving, and she went back there in kids' church. She started plugging into small groups. She got on the softball team, and now when you talk to her, it's not about all the problems that she Man, my daughter's fired up about going to kids' church. I can't wait to get in there and serve. I can't believe what God's doing in my life. I can't believe how he's changing. I can't believe how he's transforming. So if your life is stuck in the mud, if your spiritual walk feels like it's on hold, I want to give you that catalyst to jostle it. It's called serving. So before you go today, if this is your church and you want to make it yours, let us know on that connection card. Circle a place that you might want to serve. We will plug you in and help you engage. Would you rise up with me before we go today? Thank you for coming out. Thank you for listening to our heart, our mission, our vision, what we believe in, the heartbeat of Journey Church. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment? The question remains, will we be a people who organize our lives around the plans and purposes of our God? The starting point of that, as I shared earlier, is really a relationship with Christ. If you're here today and you don't have a relationship with him, he desperately loves you. Maybe a friend brought you here. They brought you here because they love you. They want you to know him and he wants to be in a relationship with you. He died on a cross that you might have life. Some of you have been believers for a long time, but for some reason you've strayed away and your relationship's not where you want it to be. Today might be a day where you feel led to rededicate your life to him. We're not going to do anything strange and nobody's looking around. What we would like to do is pray for you right where you're at. If that's you and you're in this place, would you do me a favor? You want to dedicate your life or rededicate it to him today? Just raise your hand up high so I can see it. I see your hand and yours and yours and yours and yours and yours and yours. Thank you, Lord. Let's all repeat this in prayer. Jesus, you are the son of God who died on a cross and rose again that I might have life, that I might be forgiven. Jesus, we believe that you are the Son of God, 
that your blood was shed for me. I lay my sins at your feet and I ask you to make me white as snow. From this day forward, I will live my life for you. You are my alpha and omega, my beginning and end. And I love you, Jesus. If you just remain in a state of prayer for one moment. And maybe you do feel like your faith is stuck on hold. You sense that you're not moving forward in your faith. Maybe you feel that you've even regressed a bit recently and you know that it's time to engage. You know that it's time to become involved. You know that it's time to align your life with his purposes and plans. You know that it's time to make him the center of your life, but you need a little help. You want somebody to pray for you. Would you do me a favor if that's you? Would you raise your hands up for a minute? I'd love to pray for you many, many all throughout the room today. Father, we pray and join with those who have lifted their hands today in humble submission to you as they've heard your word and heard this story of loving God, loving others, and serving the world. They're like me. They desperately want to be a part of what you're doing. And sometimes our lives take us in different directions that diverge from your path, Lord God. Today, we ask you to illuminate the way that we might follow in your footsteps, Lord God, that we would stop trying to do it on our own that we would surrender to you and your purposes and your plan, that you would reveal it to us clearly, that there would be no questioning what it is that you want us to do. And Father, if we need to, if it's you that you're talking to, if it's, if it's you and us that you're talking to, to become involved, to plug in, to serve, Father, would you give us the boldness and the courage to fill out one of those forms or to show up tomorrow out there at that outreach, but to begin to get involved in our local church to make a difference for you with our lives, with our finances, with our talents, with our heart, our skills, our abilities. Lord, let us be fully engaged. Let us become fully involved in what you're doing. Would you be the center of our lives and of our heart? Father, we pray that kind of blessing over the people of Journey Church this morning. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, amen.